Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. I want to welcome everyone to our webinar today uh, titled Becoming the Policy Management Guru for Your Organization. I am so very excited to have Cheryl Landis present for us. Cheryl has over 25 years of technical writing experience. She's written numerous articles on the subject of technical communication and speaks regularly at many industry conferences, including our own Mad World user conference here in San Diego. She's also the owner of Tabby Cat Communications, where for the last 25 plus years, she's been successful in helping her clients with so many aspects of technical writing initiatives. And Cheryl, I'm just so thrilled to have you present for us today. Um, quick reminder for everybody, we will be recording this and we'll be sending out a link to the recording as soon as it's uh, uh, done and rendered. We also encourage you all to ask questions. There's a questions panel in the GoToWebinar console there. Uh, we'll do what we can to answer um, whatever we can, time permitting, at the end. And uh, we'll certainly follow up with a question and answer document to all attendees. So you'll have that, you'll have the recording, and all of the slides that Cheryl is using today. Um, so that will go out in an email. Um, all right, so we have a lot to get to today. So uh, Cheryl, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. OK, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, before we get started, I'm going to give you a little more of an introduction about how I came about working on policy and procedures. Um, like many technical writers in my age group, I started out in a roundabout way. I have a journalism degree, and so like many writers who live in the Northwest where I am, we got discovered in other ways. Uh, what my discovery was, I worked as a secretary for six years in, at various organizations ranging from state government in Oregon to uh, maritime transportation in Seattle. And when I was working at the maritime company, one of the big responsibilities I had in my role as administrative assistant was working on policies and procedures. I was in, I was working with people in just about every department of the company because as most of us know who work on policy and procedures, the, they touch every single function in the company and department. So eventually my role evolved into a technical writer, and that's how I got started, and I liked it and, and continued that. So today we're going to talk about the five best practices for developing policies and procedures, and then I'm going to show you some doc to help features that are really great in helping you develop policy and procedure documents and, and managing content. So here's the first best practice. Um, there's a lot of confusion on what a policy and what a procedure is. And I've noticed this as well when I've been working on policies and procedures for, for companies. But there's really a simple difference. And it is the policy is what the company does, and the procedure is how the company does it. So, so, there's, so I will show you an example of a policy statement here. Um, this would be for a company who, perhaps like a store or another type of organization where they're uh, handling transactions on site and people are paying in cash, customers are paying in cash. So employees who are, in, who are trained in proper cash handling procedures would be allowed to accept cash and process the transactions. So those would be the clerks and possibly the managers of the shift who are working in this environment. This would be the procedure, and there would be a lot more um, items in this, but this is just an excerpt from a procedure that would go with this policy. Um, there are two types of procedures. One is, is informational, so there really aren't steps. It's just items that the uh, workers would need to follow when they're doing their job, but they're not necessarily in any order. So in this case, this would be a procedure where it's information. This is what the um, clerks would need to do, or the manager in, in the case of the last bullet, who is balancing the receipts after each shift. But 
there are cases where this would not necessarily go in the order that's listed here. Another type of procedure is step. So in this case, this is a step-by-step -step procedure on how to change your password. And so this would go with a policy where a company is, is talking about their security and how you need to change your password and how often you need to change your password. The second best practice is focusing on only one policy and procedure in each section of the document. One of the things that I've noticed in, in some jobs that I've worked on policy and procedures is that people would combine two, three, four, sometimes five different items in the same policy and procedure. And the policy and procedure would be getting so long and confusing that people wouldn't even read it. So at that point, it's like, why even have a policy and procedure? Um, focusing on only one policy and procedure obviously eliminates confusion. It enhances readability. And it also ensures that people will actually use the policy and procedure, which is, is why we have policy and procedures. The third best practice is organizing each policy and procedure logically. The best thing to do here is to go from general to specific. So what you want to do is start with your policy and then follow that by the procedure. So you you want to start out with what the company intends for people to do and then have information on how to do it. The fourth best practice is writing clearly and concisely. Um, so here is, of course, best practices with technical communication. You want to write short sentences. Um, avoid jargon whenever possible. If you have to use any kind of jargon, you want to explain it. Have some kind of a, either a definition section in the policy itself, or if there are, are a lot of definitions, it would be better to have a glossary in the policy and procedure document so that people can look up the information in one place instead of having to flip pages or or uh, search if the document is online. Another, this, another uh, no-no is to not use convoluted corporate language or what I call corporate ease. Um, there, this happens, I think, even more in policies and procedures where, for some reason, the company thinks that if we use bigger words that it sounds impressive and people will think it's just really cool and wonderful, but when you start doing that, people get confused. And sometimes it also turns people off. So you want to make sure that the content is understandable, it's simple, so that people will follow the policies and procedures. Also use active voice. Um, so Instead of saying that, for example, the invoice was approved by the manager, you want to say the manager approved the invoice. Um, try to elim eliminate as there, there are times when you might have to use a little passive voice, but it's better as much as you can to use the active voice. It just makes readability a lot easier as well. And also limit the page length of each policy and procedure. Many experts who have um, done a lot of work with policy and procedures recommend a maximum of six pages per policy and procedure. But less is even better if you can do it. There are times where you might not be able to do it, but it's better to use um, as few as possible for readability. Um, if the policy and procedure starts getting to be more than six pages, there's probably actually more than one policy in that section. So look at ways that you can break it down into two policies at that point. And the fifth best practice is creating 
a policy and procedures template that's easy to use. It's very important with working at, with policy and procedures to have the easiest possible template that you can develop because typically what happens in policy and procedure writing is that it's not only a technical communicator that's creating these. Or in some companies, a technical communicator might not even be creating policy and procedures. They, there might be, depending on the size of the company, the technical communicator might actually be doing a final edit pass and not actually doing the writing. And in other companies, it might be an administrative assistant that's coordinating the entire project. Like at the company where I worked before I broke into technical writing, I was coordinating the project myself. You want to use a simple layout, um, the simplest layout possible so that people who have varying abilities in working in software can use the template and use it successfully and so that eliminates um, your production time, or excuse me, <laughs> it eliminates the amount of time um, in your production process, the simpler your layout is. And these other aspects also uh, fall into that. Using paragraph and character styles for consistency is very important, um, not only to make sure that all of your uh, text formatting and indentations are consistent, but also because of some of the features that Doc to help uh, takes advantage of this, and I will be showing those to you next. Um, also, make sure that when you do create a template, that you train anyone creating policies and procedures on how to use the template. It's really critical to do this because, again, people have varying experiences in using software. A lot of times people have learned how to use the software on their own, and so they only use the features that they're that they need and sometimes people don't have not branched out in using features that you need to teach them for using the template. So it's it's best to train everybody just to make sure that they know how to use the template, make sure they're using it correctly, and again that cuts down on your production time at the end. So now we're going to talk about cool doc to help features. I have five features that I wanted to show you that I really like in Doc to help um, to, to create policies and procedures. Um, one of the nice things about Doc to help is that it works with Word. So when you install Doc to help, um, you will be there's a it's kind of like a plugin that that installs in Word, and there's actually a separate tab where you can access Doc to Help features and um, set up um, different cool things in the Word documents. So primarily, um, when you you how I how I've been doing it is that I work on my Word document, then I import it into Doc to Help, and you can select your primary target, which a target means an output. Um, so let's say that you have a Word document in your doc to help and you want to create an online help version and you want to create a print version, you can set up a target for your online help version. You can set up a target for your um, print version. Um, you can import documents from your computer, which is what I did because I'm, I'm a consultant, so everything's on my computer. But if you're working in a, a company, you can also import documents from your network folder or even SharePoint. Doc to Help has a really cool feature where you can import from SharePoint and then you can also save documents back into SharePoint. Um, you can also import multiple Word documents into the same Doc to Help project. So let's say if if um, you're working on one policy and procedure and then somebody else is working on a different policy and procedure. You can put all of those Word documents into the same Doc to Help project and um, organize your content and do your outputs from Doc to Help. 
And you can also continue working with your Word documents in Word and Doc to help. So that, in other words, once you get your Word documents into a Doc to help project, you can continue working um, with um, both features in the same place and uh, and go from there. So that's really nice. You don't have to keep re-importing documents or anything like that. Um, so this is, this is the, the Doc to Help uh, tab I was talking about earlier. Um, this is actually a screenshot in Word. So when when you install Doc to Help, this is installed in your version of Word. And so you can take advantage of all the different features in Doc to Help to help set up your Word document for uh, production in Doc to Help. And we'll be talking about some more of these things as we go here. So the second cool feature that I really like is, as I mentioned earlier, choosing from a variety of outputs or as a the term that Doc to Help uses is targets. So here I did a screenshot in, this is actually in Doc to Help, but I just took a screenshot of the different types of outputs that are available in Doc to Help. And here you can see there are there's EPUB, there is print, uh, which is the one called manual, um, and then there's all kinds of different help formats that you can publish to. So there's quite a variety of different outputs that you can use. And you can create multiple targets. So the example that I'm going to use here is I have this fictional company called Smith Construction. And the company construction the construction industry relies heavily on administrative assistance to to help um, the managers at construction sites keep everything running. So I have a lot of administrative assistant policy and procedures. And then I also have a lot of safety procedures. And the reason I have those is because safety at a construction company is critical. You have to, you have to follow safety rules in order to prevent injuries and, and other catastrophes. And so construction companies are very careful to make sure that their employees are abiding by these. So I want to create two targets. I want to, I want to have a target to where I can create a printed administrative assistant manual so that when an administrative assistant is working on a construction site, in the trailer, this person will have all of the policies and procedures that they need to follow in one place. And then I also want to create a separate target for my safety manual so that the managers, whether they're on site or in the main office, can have this information in a separate place. So to do that, in the home, this is in Doc to Help again, in the home tab, there's a little button that I have in the square here that you click on to start setting up these multiple targets. And then when you click on that button, you get what's on the left that's called a help target um, window. And so in this case, I want my printed manual. So I am selecting the printed manual for the first target I want to create. Um, then I am going to create a target that I'm calling policy manual. And so that is what happens on the second dialog box that we have here. And then I have my new target called policy manual. So I am going to use this target to create my two different versions of this manual. So I will create my administrative assistant manual and my safety um, manual. And so there's another step that I have to do to get to that point. And that's cool feature number three, where you can create multiple versions of documents from the same target. 
So this is how we do it. So you have your target. We have our printed manual. Um, and so to create our separate um, manuals, we have to set attributes. So there's another uh, tab in Dr. Help called Project. And we set up our attributes through the Project tab. So we click on the Attributes button that's highlighted on this uh, screenshot. And then a separate window opens up called Attributes. And so my policies, I, I add a new attribute and I'm calling it policies. You can call your attribute anything you want. And then under that, I'm creating values. And those values will be what I'm using to create the two different outputs. So to create the um, values, I just click on the Add New Value uh, button at the top of this window. And then I enter the, the names of the values that I want. So in this case, I have one called Administrative Assistant abbreviated, and one called safety. Then I click OK, and my attributes are set. Once I have my attributes set, then what I want to do is go back into, um, go back um, to the topics tab in Doc to help, and I'm going to set up what's called properties. Um, I am going to, in the, um, on the right of the screen where all the topics are highlighted in blue, what I did here is I am selecting all of the topics that I want to go into my administrative assistant manual. So what I did here is I, I clicked on the, the first topic in the um, list where I wanted to um, select the admin assistant topics and then went down and shift click to the bottom of the list so that I had all of my topics for the admin assistant manual highlighted. Then I clicked on the properties button and then down in the bottom left hand corner of the screenshot I, I checked the admin assistant attribute. So that assigns all of those topics that I selected to the Administrative Assistant Manual. And then I repeated the same steps to get my safety manual. So, so I went back into the topics in Doc to Help, and I selected all of the topics from my topic list that I want to include in the safety manual. Then I went back into the properties and then checked the safety attribute so that all of those topics that I selected would be assigned to the safety manual. This is something that I also wanted to mention when you are assigning attributes to targets because I, I, I experimented with this for a while and, and uh, sort of learned this the hard way. <laughs> um, assign your attributes to only the topics that you want to be included in a specific version of the document. So when I was experimenting with this, at first I was trying to make every single topic that I had in my content to be assigned to something. And I didn't have to do that. So for example, let's say most policies and procedures have some kind of an introduction or they have some other common sections that would be in any manual that you would publish. So in those cases, you would not need to assign an attribute to those topics because when you output, they will be included in whichever version of the document that you're outputting to. Okay, so um, now to output to a specific version of your document, you select your target. So in, 
in this case, I'm selecting the safety um, attribute. And this is where we're outputting. So um, you go back to the Home tab, and you click on the little arrow down at the bottom of the tab again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing the Admin Assistant Manual. Sorry about that. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm outputting to the, uh, the Administrative Assistant Manual version. So when I go into this uh, Help Target window, to do my output, I want to make sure that I select the correct attributes so I output the correct manual. So in this case, I'm doing the administrative assistant manual, so I check that box under the policies, um, and then I click OK to save that. Then I go back into the Home tab on the screenshot in the right, and then I click Build. And so that will build my administrative assistant manual. The fourth cool feature that I really like is the table of contents creation feature. This is really nice because we all have had our nightmares in Word where we're creating our table of contents, we're, we're generating it in Word and something doesn't go right or the page numbers aren't correct or a million other things can possibly happen. The nice part of, of using Doc to help with Word is that you don't even have to create your table of contents in Word. There's only one thing you have to do in Word, and that is make sure that your paragraph style for headings is set correctly. So you really, that's another reason why it's important to have a template that's uh, consistent when you have multiple people working on policies and procedures, because you want to make sure that all of your headings are correct, um, all of your other styling is correct, so that when you generate documents from Doc to Help, all of the all of the formatting will be correct when you're done. So, in Word, you make sure that your headings are set um, correctly. Um, in this particular, this is part of the safety uh, policy and procedures for this for the, our fictional Smith Construction Company. So I have a Heading 1 and a Heading 2 set here. Um, I went through my entire, um, all of my policies and procedures to make sure I had my headings set correctly. So that's all I have to do in Word to set up my table of contents. So now what happens is this is on my first import into Doc to Help. So in this case, I was starting from scratch. So I opened up Doc to Help. I created my Doc to Help project. And then I only have one Word document for this particular um, policy and procedure project. But most likely, you would have several in yours. So I imported my Word document into Doc to Help. And when you import on the first time, you're going to you're not going to see any topics over in your topic tab yet. And there's a reason for that, which I will show you. So what happens is once you import your document, your Word document into Doc to Help, you need to uh, build your document or compile it. And then what happens is Doc to Help will take a look at your Word content and it's going to take all of the heading ones and all of the heading twos and create separate topics based on those headings. So my introduction started out with a heading one title. So I have a, a separate topic with that heading one. Um, same with my administrative assistant policy and procedure, the second one, which is a introduction to the administrative assistance section. And then farther down, we have some subheadings under one section for, for cell phones, how to handle cell phone ordering, how to handle incoming and outgoing mail. And you will also notice on the right, in this right column type, it will also, Doc to Help also tells you, OK, this is this heading is for the table of contents. Heading 2 is a conceptual topic. 
Um, but what will happen when you generate, or excuse me, when, yeah, when you generate, um, these headings are also going to automatically go in your table of contents. And that's what it looks like. This is the default symbol for Doc to help. I did not change this. But um, you can adjust this uh, table of contents template to your preferences. Um, but this was just a, a test to see what it would look like. And this is, um, this is the printed output, um, the print manual output. If you're doing um, an online help version or an EPUB version, it looks different, but you still get your table of contents by uh, building through Doc to Help without having to go into Word and set it up. And so let's see, okay, what happens if you've done all this and then all of a sudden someone says, okay, I need to add another policy or procedure or maybe several people say they need to do this. Um, you can add those really easily. Uh, make sure that your headings are set correctly so that they will populate into that table of contents. Um, you can add your documents to doc to help rebuild, and doc to help does the rest. It will create and update your topics automatically, including your table of contents. So, you never have to do anything in Word to set up those table of contents except for making sure that your heading styles are correct. The fifth feature of Doc to Help that I really like is uh, you can rebuild outputs quickly and cleanly. Um, one of the things that happens a lot when I'm working with other um, help authoring tools is if I have to rebuild something a lot, if changes are happen happening really fast or uh, I'm testing something to make sure it works and, and I, I'm constantly recompiling my content, sometimes there will be error messages that, that something didn't get cleaned out when I rebuilt. And so this feature in Doc to Help takes care of that. So after you've done your initial build of a document, you don't have to go back to the build button and build it. You can go to the rebuild button and select rebuild. And what happens there is Doc to Help clears out any um, old information that is present from your previous build and starts over again. And so you get a clean build. You don't get any errors. It's really nice. I have two other features here that I'd like to talk about. Um, one of the things that you might have noticed and wondered about is, OK, well, I need to build PDF output. Where do I get that? Well, what happens is when you create a printed version of a manual, you can just click on the View PDF in the Home tab and launch your PDF. You don't have to actually go through a separate build to get your PDF or set up a separate template to get your PDF. Doc to Help works off of your printed manual template. So it's all in one click after you build to a printed manual output. Another feature that is really nice to have is if you want to to view your latest output at any time, you can just click on this View button in the Home tab um, instead of having to um, go another route to do that. It's always available for you to do that. It works only with the latest output you did. So like, for example, if you output to EPUB, you would be viewing your latest EPUB output here. If you wanted to, let's say, um, view a printed version of your manual, but that wasn't your last output, you would need to rebuild in order to get that um, so you can view it with that button. Okay, so let's, looks like we're going to have some time for questions. Um, so here is a summary of the five best practices that we talked about. Um, the difference between a policy and a procedure is that the policy is what um, 
the company wants to do and the procedure tells how the company does it. Um, you want to focus on one policy and procedure in each section of the document. Uh, do not combine more than one policy and procedure because it, it creates confusion and could cause people to not read them and not abide by them. Organize each policy and procedure logically. So you want to um, include the policy first followed by the procedure. So you're going from the general to the specific. Write clearly and concisely. Use terminology that's easy to understand. Uh, keep sentences short. Limit the length of your policies and procedures to six pages or preferably less. If it, if it looks like that the policies and procedures are getting longer than that, um, look at possibly breaking them down into um, a couple of uh, policies and procedures. Um, also, something else that I did not mention here that I should point out is that you've probably seen where each policy and procedure would have a section referencing other policies and procedures. There have been some clients that I've worked with where sometimes these lists get really long. We could have sometimes 10 or 15 policies and procedures that are being referenced, and that also gets very confusing. If there is any way that that can be limited to possibly two or three at the max, that would be ideal. Um, people, employees, and just do not like having to switch back and forth between policies and procedures or or any other sections in any kind of technical documents or otherwise to get information. So it, it's better to try to keep everything in the same place as much as possible. Also, uh, the fifth best practice is creating policy and procedures template that's easy to use. Um, and Dr. Help can certainly make life so much easier with the policy and procedures template. Um, and then the five cool Dr. Help features that we talked about, you can use existing Word documents in Dr. Help. Um, you don't have to start over from scratch. Uh, this makes it easier because People in, most people in your organization are using Word, and so since a lot of people in different departments are writing policies and procedures, you don't have to worry about learning new software, and it just makes the process a lot easier when, when you're putting together these manuals. You can also choose from a variety of outputs or targets. Uh, you can output to various formats such as EPUB, online help, and um, printed manual. You can also create multiple versions of documents from the same target as I was showing with having my administrative assistant manual for the construction company and the safety manual. You can also easily create table of contents. You don't have to do this in Word. You can do it in Doc to help, and it's so much easier. You just have to make sure that your heading paragraph styles are set correctly in Word so that, that Doc to help can see those when it's creating, uh, building your document. And you can also rebuild outputs quickly and cleanly. Um, just click the rebuild button, and you're there. Here is my contact information, and um, as Jennifer was mentioning, you will get a copy of these slides. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me if we don't cover it in the question and answer session today. And um, as Jennifer said, we will also be answering any questions that are not, that we don't have time for today as well. So I am turning this back to Jennifer. She has a couple of announcements for you. Thank you so much, uh, Cheryl. We very much appreciate it. Um, so before I make these announcements, just a reminder, if, if anybody has any questions, feel free to use the questions panel there um, in the GoToWebinar uh, console, and we'll certainly try to address those. It looks like we have a little bit of a, uh, an issue here with the display on the slide, so I, I want to apologize. I just want to let everybody know, as a registered attendee, we do have two focused classes coming up 
on Flare, in fact, where you get $100 off your registration. So contact us at sales at madcapsoftware.com if you have any questions. These are also listed on our website, and so you can have a full look at the modules that we cover in each class and the upcoming dates. Um, the next slide, uh, Cheryl, if you want to advance there. Thank you. So the next slide, just a reminder, our call for papers is um, uh, open. The due date is at the end of this week, July 29th. So and, uh, encouraging anybody who is interested in um, potentially presenting at our Mad World User Conference next year to submit um, your uh, session papers to us. And there's a lot of information at madworldconference.com about um, subject matter, ideas, um, how to actually submit. So encourage everybody to visit that site. Um, have a, a couple questions coming in, but I actually have one for you, Cheryl, too, that I'd like to ask. In your experience, are you seeing, um, I, I'm a, it, maybe it depends on the client and the industry, um, in terms of policies and procedures, are many organizations um, still in a print-based world, or, or are many migrating to an online format? What, what's been your experience so far? I'm, I'm assuming there's a little bit of a both, uh, but just wondering what, what you see in your practice. It really depends on the company, and I know that sounds like a consultant cop-out, but um, so, <laughs> um, some of the companies I work for, they use Word, and that's it. And so they, they tend to stick with Word, and they don't want to take the time or spend the money converting to an online format. Um, I don't think they realize you know that the cost can be very inexpensive, uh, but they they hear all these stories, and that's what happens. Um, on the other hand, last year I did have a big project for a construction company in the southeast. They're a regional company, so they're fairly large. Um, I never heard of them until this person contacted me and wanted me to help her with this project. Um, what we did is we spent a year, it, this was for a year, converting all of their um, policies and procedures, all of their manuals from printed documents. We literally had to retype some of the content because it was so old that they didn't have anything online, anything in Word, and then some was in Word, but we converted all of this to Flare. And I I was there for a year helping them get all this content into Flare and getting them started. And then in December, I trained a person on site so that she could take over. And I'm happy to report as of three weeks ago, they published it. And they're just, they're really excited about it. And then what kinds of things can you see? Because there are a lot of folks that want to continue authoring in Word where, you know, Dr. Help certainly provides a lot of benefit there. Are you finding there's um, a lot of uh, option for content reuse? I mean, there, there must be a lot of boilerplate information that comes about in policy and procedure type documents. Um, in, in your experience, how could you see something like Doc to help um, helping those who want to continue authoring in Word in terms of saving time and money, repurposing some of that boilerplate information? Oh, I see. I see a lot of opportunity. Um, I think the the biggest um, the thing is getting the word out about Doc to Help because there are so many things about Doc to Help that can make publishing documents from Word a lot easier, and people can still work in Word while and make updates while you're uh, publishing to Doc to Help, and it's so easy just to update anything in Doc to Help. So those five features that I talked about. There's so many more things that Dr. Help can do that can make life easier. And people really don't have to switch their actual content production tool. I'm, I'm using Word as the, the content production tool in that example. Um, but they can use Dr. Help to set up um, the, the structure of their documents, uh, do their multiple outputs, and um, customize the content that they need to do to get to the right audience. So, yeah, it, I think, yeah, it's a great opportunity, I think. Okay, good. Another question here from an attendee. Um, can you create uh, a master style sheet in Doc to help and share it across documents? 
I'm used to flair, and I've always had issues sharing style sheets in Word CSS style. So this is an interesting question. Maybe it's a little bit different way of thinking versus, you know, flair versus doc to help. H how do you handle sort of consistency in doc to help? Or what maybe That's something I didn't cover, but yes, you can create a master template in doc to help, and there's already several master templates provided. Uh, depending on what output you want to use. But you can assign those master templates to your target and um, publish that way. So the concept works similar to Flare, although I, from what I've seen, there's less steps in Doc to Help versus Flare to achieve that. That would be a good, that would be a good topic for another webinar. We'll have to do that, that definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, well, I think we're going to go ahead and, and wrap up. So Cheryl, thank you so much for presenting for us today. This was very informative. I um, want to thank everybody for attending this afternoon. Um, friendly reminder, we will be compiling a recording of this and all the slides, and we'll be sending it out to all attendees. Um, if any of you have any ideas or suggestions for future content you'd like to see, please drop us a line here at Madcap Software. We'd be um, very open to your suggestions. Um, and we very much look forward to seeing you on our next presentations. Have a great rest of the week. Cheryl, thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.